And hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to another episode of Unlocking Excellence with your main man, Coach Eric Schwefel. We have a great one for you today, okay? So if you're watching the video, you see the handsome guy, here's up, he's up on the screen. This is Mr. Gurjeet Sandhu. I got it right that time. And um, he, G, G and I have known each other for a couple of years now. G was referred to me um, over at the gym and we've grown, we've formed a friendship and I cannot wait for you guys to hear this conversation, to talk about it. We just had like 10 minutes talking and was it quite 10? Yeah, it was about that. And dude, it's, it's going to be great, you guys. Okay, so now G, we are going to go over kind of what we just talked about. So G at one point, right, he was working two jobs. He was working at Buckle. He was working at Domino's and he discovered the power of commissions and he ended up becoming the top salesman in the company. And then he worked at a Boost Mobile. And from there, there was a few things that happened. You explained it so well. So, G, could you go over that one more time for us? Sure. Yeah. So when I was um, when I first graduated high school, uh, 2010, I uh, moved from St. Amant, as you would say. Uh, if you're from there, you say St. Amant. Yeah. Uh, So uh, I moved from there to New Orleans uh, to go to UNO for an electrical engineering degree. Um, It's just uh, at that time, I uh, was uh, about to have my first child. Um, uh, You know, I just knew the temptations at uh, LSU, just the party town, uh, just the party, you know, on campus and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to, uh, at that point, uh, already had motivation to want to do something better. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to UNO um, because uh, that campus, uh, there's not really much going on. I don't know if you've ever been to UNO. There's not really much going on there. It's a, it's a smaller school. Um, so, uh, but besides that, um, ended up, uh, I just, uh, I was always money driven, um, very motivated by money uh, because I didn't have a lot of it growing up. Right. Uh, Parents just didn't, you know, uh, my dad, um, he owned uh, and dro- drove his own taxi, um, but that was about all. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, so not a lot of that, um, you know, not a lot of money. Um, and so when I got the chance to work, I, I did it. So, you know, going to UNO, uh, school was paid for because of uh, GPA and the ACT scores. Nice. Um, so what I did was I would save money every single year um, from going to school and working two jobs. And uh, so I was able to accumulate a good chunk of change after a few years. Right. Um, so I found Domino's because my brother was working there. Um, and uh, before you know it, him and I are competing for the, the best delivery ratings and stuff like that. It's just how competitive we always been. Um, and uh, you know, so I started doing that, and then um, I always had a dream of working at Buckle, dude. I, as a kid, like uh, as 15 years old or whatever, when uh, when I could start working, I applied at Buckle in Baton Rouge. Just could not get the job. They just wouldn't give it to me. I just, I guess, I didn't have the fashion sense or whatever um, to do it. And uh, uh, you know, they're very fashionable people, and yeah. I just very well because of uh, social anxiety because I just didn't know how to talk to people. <laughs> so, you uh, really. <laughs> I no, I had no idea how to do it. Like, uh, just never was good at it. Um, and, uh, was always just nervous, always nervous to talk to people, talk in front of people, just not what I, you know, not what you would say about me now. Right. Right. So, uh, I just couldn't get the job. I interviewed there twice. They just wouldn't give me the job. So I, uh, uh, I was like, Hey, I'm gonna just apply again. Um, uh, you know, graduated high school now I'm gonna apply again. Uh, and this, um, uh, the manager at the time, he was just starting out. He gave me the job. He had just started. Um, and I just, uh, you know, um, he took a chance. Uh, and I was not fashionable. That's like, takes, I, man, that's all it takes. I didn't know how to dress myself, like, uh, you know, and all that stuff. And then let alone mannequins. So, uh, you know, I started that job and I just loved it, but I had, uh, a trainee, uh, or trainer tell me, Hey, uh, because I sucked. I sucked. It was terrible. Like uh, I started out and it was just terrible. I couldn't sell it to anybody because of the social anxiety talking right. to people. Uh, and that's partially because my, uh, like my dad and my mom, they just didn't believe us in us doing anything. Um, very, mm. right. 
of like going out and doing things, parties and stuff like that. Like, uh, people were in high school partying and stuff. We weren't allowed to do it. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. And it's very strict, like uh, just a cultural thing. Yeah. So with that said, um, he, uh, you know, I, that manager took a chance on me um, and uh, I started working there. Sucked, just completely sucked at, at the, the job. Even had somebody that was training me tell me that I sucked. Probably should look for another job. Uh, I became really good friends with that person later on. Um, this is and still Buckle, right? At Buckle, yeah. At Buckle. And I was like, man, I just never had anybody tell me that I suck. Like, I just never had somebody tell me that I suck at something. Yeah. And uh, I was like, man, uh, you know what? I'm just going to prove them wrong. I'm just going to stick around. I'm going to figure this out and, uh, and do it. And then it just clicked. Um, like, from one day to another, right. I, I so motivated to want to uh, be the top salesperson to know how to dress people and do this and that, man, I just did it. Right. Like, so it was just a, it was a mindset thing um, of like, I want to prove this person wrong so badly that I'm going to do anything I could possibly to make it happen because I was already living that with my dad. Mm -hmm. He was like, Hey, you know, like having a all A's and one B wasn't good enough. Right. Right perfect scores and this and that so it was always like hey you know somebody to please or somebody to make happy and I was like hey you know what I'm gonna uh at this point I was like I'm you know I'm living that life you know where somebody's already telling me like hey you know my best isn't good enough right so right. at this point, I felt the same so I wanted to make sure that I did it and uh just from you know watching YouTube videos like hey uh you know how to approach yourselves um you know, salespeople, like how to get over social anxiety and stuff like that. And just practicing it, talking to yourself in the mirror, role playing. Um, oh, and see, I didn't know you did that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, role playing in my company now, it's a big thing. We do it yeah. every single day, videos every single day. And uh, people always tell me it's not natural. And I was like, it, it's the best thing about it is it's not natural. So when you've got to do it in, in the real world. It's easier. Yep. So going back to that, you know, um, I started working at Buckle Man, just uh, saw success um, very shortly after I uh, started working there and uh, just kept going, going, going. Uh, before you know it, I'm the top salesperson in the country for 26 pay periods. Um, and they're giving me, um, you know, certificates. And, and uh, I remember buddies of mine, they're like, oh, here's another one. <laughs> here's another one. And, uh, you know, with that said, I... Uh, 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 me and this manager, we just grew together. Um, he, he's still there. He's very successful at that company. Um, so we just grew together. And uh, um, the time came where I just quit Domino's. I quit Domino's and I almost thought about just working at Buckle full time um, and, uh, you know, making that a career. Like, just pop out of co because those guys are making six figures. And I didn't, I've never knew what six figures was until, you know, um, like until I saw those numbers over there, I'm like, man, these guys are really, and all they're doing is selling clothes. And like, I love it. Right. Like, I, this is the kind of stuff I love. And like, yeah. uh, it's amazing. they're making six figures. Why not? And, uh, you know, uh, long story short, we kept going, kept going. I just never saw the growth. I just never saw it. Uh, always a salesperson because, you know, not all good salespeople, uh, make good leaders and maybe that's what they thought. Right. So, um never got that room for improvement or advancement there um so i ended up leaving um leaving and taking a lesser job i you know started working at boost mobile and i absolutely hated it yeah like when i first started just absolutely hated it yeah really yep uh started working there um i mean man when you start thinking about it you're working at a in a um and at, the, at that store it was just in the hood, right? Like it's smack in the hood. The clientele you're dealing with, you just went from people buying $150 pairs of jeans to buying free phones. <laughs> and they barely have money to pay for their service. So you're 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 you start to um kind of start questioning yourself, like, uh, what did I do? Um, and uh, you know, did I do it out of anger or what what was it? Right. Um, and um I just absolutely hated it, but I saw something there that I never saw at the other place. And I told him, Hey, uh, the owner, um, at the time there was, from my understanding, it was only one brother. 
you know, um, uh, one of the guys that uh, hired me on. Um, so I, I ended up uh, working for him and uh, he said, hey, you know, if you become, if you say what you, like, if you do what you say you can do, like be the top salesperson, I'll make you a manager of uh, one of our new stores. Done, right? Top salesperson within the first uh, first month at that, at their store. I, I had the background, man. I've been training. This is what I did, right? Like just uh, now I'm giving up stuff away for free. Like who can't do that, right? And uh, right. and I was like, man, I'm doing this. Uh, so I just started doing that. Uh, before you know it, um, you know, I'm learning everything, like learning how to do the reports, learning how to do the payroll, learning how to do like the, the sales and training. So they make me the district manager or like the area manager of their 10 stores. Um, that continues I mean, man, we're doing really well. Then the three brothers, the, the other two brothers pop out of nowhere. They're like, hey, we want our, like, everything's going well, right? So they're like, we want to split up our company because I feel like I could do it better. The other person's like, no, I could do it better. The other person said, no, I could do it better. So they ended up splitting up. I was like, man, uh, at this point, I've already been there for a year and a half. Um, and I was like, man, I think I could really do this myself. And um uh, <clears throat> It just so happened uh, their opportunity came and I passed it up. Mm-hmm. Another opportunity came and I passed it up. Mm-hmm. And I came and I passed it up. Then there was another one. This 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 is the one. the 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 fourth one comes up and um, I just decide. You know what? I wake up and there was that the fear was gone. I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm just. I was like, I'm 22 or 23 at the time. I'm like, I'm yeah. gonna. Just, I woke up and I was like, I'm going to do it. And uh, that was it. I never questioned it again. Uh, and I bought that store with all the money I had saved up because I was, dude, I'm, I'm talking about eating ramen noodles, uh, yeah. like for lunch and dinner, right? Like, <laughs> like, like you for, do kind of deal, you know, like, so uh, just eating ramen noodles, man. Like, uh, and, uh, you know, at that time, I'm like, man, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to save my money. And my dad used to always ask, Hey, what are you saving all this money for? And I was like, I don't know, but I know it's going to be for something, something good, you know, and uh, that's what happened. I ended up, uh, opening up my first store, um, literally my investment was made back within six weeks. Six weeks? Wow. Yeah. Wow, it, wow, wow. It was, um, you know, and I, and this, in the, my mind, I had set up to where, uh, oh, you know what? by in five years i'll have this many stores it was five five stores i'll have five stores i'll have uh made back this much money uh you know my roi or return on investment is going to be about two years um with these numbers factored in dude i ended up the numbers ended up tripling there so like i'm like everything but when you know you're talking about like device sales numbers tripled everything tripled Uh, or like quadrupled accessory sales was like off the charts we started doing repairs and all this stuff and before you know it like we're making really good money um so i was just about to ask if it was more or less you made it back in gross or you made it back in profit after the expenses but you just like um i think that's a um you know there's a there's a fear and maybe i'm just getting ahead of myself here but there's a fear of when people say uh it's too late to do it yeah you know, like people are like, oh, it's too late to do the stock market. Dude, no, it's not. You know, it's too late to do Amazon FBA. It's not. Oh, I'm 300 pounds. It's too late to get a six pack. It, it really isn't, but it might just take you a little longer, yep. you know, but, and there's really no shortcuts to like success. Um, there's no get rich fast. You know, I, I prefer the get rich slow schemes, you yeah. know, I don't get rich fast. Um, that just doesn't, appeal to me whereas get rich slow seems more possible right like um so you know with that said that's kind of like uh you know pretty much the summary of everything you and i were talking about probably a little bit more so now where are you at right because you you just said that you just had the store um and and you settled out so where is where is gene now with his business with his life because this was this was from early or late team to mid 20s uh 20 20 um 15 2015 is when i first um first started business so right. i was 20, 23 just turned 24 15 days into 20 
turning turning 24. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Nice. So, um, I uh, now currently I'm uh, sitting at 32 locations right. uh, with Peace Mobile. I have that one Salas Station franchise that I own and operate out of Mobile. Right. Um, you know, real estate was a thing that I just came up with this year. Uh, something I wanted do um you know we're sitting at 10 properties right now uh with a few more that we're working on right um and right. wow congrats on that again because i know that's a that's a new yeah. thing to roll this year and uh you know just got into uh dabbling with the stock market and that's been going pretty well there you go man there you go if i could give you a high five right now i'd give you a high five that was you're doing so so much so much growth that's happened during that time um now growth can't happen without a vision, without values. So what has been your driving vision to make this happen? Because we all know that time can just pass you by, right? Sure. Yeah. And I, I think it's a few things um, because uh, there's a there's been a few things that have driven me to want to do what I do now. Um, and uh, I would say one of the biggest things was um, that the, the upbringing I had, um, you know, and um, you know, not to talk bad about my dad, uh, you know, uh, rest his soul, but uh, uh, he he was very tough on us as uh, growing up. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, he had a, a alcoholic problem, right? He was always drinking. So any, all the money he would make, he was literally straight to the bottle. Yeah. Um, so I never wanted to live my life like that because it was brutal. Um, you know, just growing up, I remember like having, not having things that other people had, right. Like being the last person, last of my friends to be able to get a phone, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, not even being able to get like name brand clothing and stuff like that. But the essentials were always there. We were always had a roof over our head and the food was always there. Right. So, um, there's a lot to be thankful for because I know a lot of people don't have that. Um, you know, so with that said, I, I was like, man, I never want to, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to, uh, uh, want for anything. I just want to have it. Um, you know, and that's not very, like, uh, I'm not a very materialistic person. If you guys ever see me like, uh, dude, I'm just wearing clothes that everybody else is wearing. Uh, you know, sometimes I look worse than the people, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I come in and like, I haven't gotten a haircut in two months. Uh, you know, and <laughs> so, no, man. Right. That's listening. G is very, very chill. Very, very chill. Yeah. So, you know, I just, uh, I, um, with that said, um, you know, I just didn't want that same life. Um, and I didn't want that same life for my kids. Yeah. Um, and, uh, second part of that is when I had my first son, Gavin, um, just things has changed, man. Uh, I always say kids change you for the better. Yes. Um, I just, uh, I remember wanting to do things faster, uh, not procrastinate you know, because one day he's going to be older and where will I be, you know? And uh, I'm glad to say that now he's nine years old and uh, I have a three-year-old and I'm able to do what, you know, my parents weren't able to do for me, you know? And that's huge too, you know, there was, I wish I remember where I, where I heard it, but there are three things that can force you to really grow up, marriage, starting your own business and then having kids. And, you know, it just, it makes you assume responsibility and makes you step into to ownership, right? Because um, even one of our other members, um, they said, as soon as I had my kid, I knew that there was something more important than myself. And when you know that, it's like, you know, you work for that, that person, that thing. Yeah. Because I, I believe like, you know, at that point when um, something like that happens, that changes your life forever, right? Like that's something that changes your life pretty much forever. Um, totally. If you have a new reason why, right? Like your reason, and I, you remember you and I were talking about this, uh, your reason why should make you cry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at that point, you have reasons that are so important to you that you would shed a tear if you saw happiness or sadness you know, um, in your kids, you know, um, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of, you know, I don't care who you are, as long as you're a, like a, like a very caring person, um, you know, when something happens, you worry, right? Like with your kids or like your significant other or whatever you like, uh, you know, you say, oh, you know, men don't cry and this and that. Um, but man, that thing is important, right? Like uh, you have, uh, you know, your significant other, something happens, you worry for them. 
um, you know, something happens with your kids, like you worry about them, right? Like your reason why has become enough for you to make you cry. And that's why you, you know, when you see success or you see happiness and um, you get emotional. Yep. Yep. And that's, I think that's a, that's a really good point too, because it allows you to be purpose driven for one, but then at the same time, it allows you to not really make any excuses. Right. So if it's, if it's just a superficial thing, if it's just something that's, Oh, you know, this is what I want to do today, then it's kind of whimsical and anything can sweep you. But when you get down deep into it, like when something makes you cry, that means that it's, it's pretty significant and it means something uh, to your soul not just right, at least it should, yeah at least it should be if you're letting other things bother you that shouldn't bother you then that's you know that's a whole mindset thing again yeah exactly so in and not even in, in in connecting to that why it almost i'm trying to think of the right way to put it but it almost takes the distractions totally out of it you know what i mean like if this is the most important thing to me then i don't need to focus on anything else I just need to focus on these things and how to provide for these things or given whatever the actions are that are there. Right. Like, so let's say, you know, you're in a predicament where, you know, things are happening and you just don't have the finances or whatever, and your kid's hungry. Um, and, you know, you're a good parent. You, you, lo- you love your kids unconditionally. You'll find a way, you know, you'll find a way to figure it out. Right. Because, uh, or you'll find a way to get them fed, you know? So, that's where it comes in where for me I was like man I I don't want to spoil my children not at all but I want to make sure that um, they don't have ever have to uh, want for anything like or like that's that's important right Um, there's other things like they'll say oh I need another computer well dude you just got one last year Uh, you know now can I get them another computer of course right like I I just love the want uh, like the being able to yeah Uh, no (laughs) you know but you don't have to worry about it. That's the thing, you know, you have the ability and if you need it, then it's there, you know? I think that's, um, there's a movie called Pumping Iron where Arnold, it's the the road to Arnold Schwarzenegger's win in bodybuilding. And they compare Lou Ferrigno to the wolf that's coming up the hill or maybe the lion and Arnold Schwarzenegger's on the hill. And they say, you know, you got to look out for Lou, he's hungry. And he says, yeah, but I'm the king of the hill. When I want food, it's there. I don't have to hunt for it. It's, it's, it's there. So it makes a big difference, man. Um, so what's, what's, I'm curious, right? We, we can see definitely family is a big motivator, right? Being able to have and provide is a big motivator. What are other some big motivators that you have? Um, well, like you said, family, right? That's the most important to me. That's always been the most, uh, hasn't always been the most important. I'll say that, uh, cause I was very, uh, distant, but you know, ever since my father passed away, which is actually about to be uh, coming up in a year, um, uh, mine has changed since from year to year. You know, if we were having the same conversation at the same time last year, things would be different. Um, but now, you know, because uh, a few days from now, uh, my father passed away, right? So like uh, uh, 7-22, you know, July 22nd, it'll be a one-year anniversary. Um, so with that said, you know, um, family's always been the biggest motivation for me. Um, and then uh, another one is just knowing your self-worth, um, knowing um, like what you're capable of doing um, and like what you can do and, um, you know, uh, not limiting yourself to uh, what society has made normal for everybody. Like uh, mm. you go to college, you just get another job. You don't get a, you, you know, uh, or you can't be successful without college. Mm. Um, something like that. Um, you know, uh, you got to follow these exact rules to be successful. You know, that's that I don't believe in that, you know, there's good guidelines to be successful, but I, you know, everybody's got to create their own path. So for me, like just knowing my own self-worth, like uh, that's very important. That's very, uh, you know, uh, is, I, I'm driven by that. Um, and then um, again, just uh, I'm driven by like financial freedom. Uh, I want to be able to enjoy like my time, right? I think the time is probably one of the most important things that um, everybody's given the exact same amount, but not everybody's able to enjoy it this exact same amount. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to, um, like, uh, there's, you know, there's fears that I have, like, uh, of flying, 
but I still travel. Why? Because I don't want to miss out. Um, I don't want to miss out of what's going on in this world, other countries, learning other cultures, um, you know, knowing where I came from, um, you know, letting my kids see that, you know, I want them to know what California is like, what's mm-hmm. Indian is like, what's, you know, and I want them to know why it's so different. Because I think that's what makes people some tunnel vision. Um, you know, it's when you don't travel, you only see things one way, like uh, of like how things should be. So yeah. that's the kind of stuff that really that's that's the kind of stuff that really motivates me. You know, just uh, um, time, flexibility, family, and just my self worth. So I'm I'm curious, where do you derive your self worth right now? And I say that in the sense of there are people that derive their self-worth from their relationships, from their money. Some just within themselves, they're able to derive that. So where do you derive that? Um, it would first go off based off of uh, my, uh, my relationship with my friends and family. You know, how close am I to them? Am I able to make time for what's important in their life as well as mine? Um, if I'm not able to make time for them because I'm so busy, then what I'm doing isn't... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty much saying what I'm doing is not uh, is more important than family and friends, which that should never be the case. Um, you know, so for me, that's where, uh, you know, just the, the self-worth uh, derives from. And obviously, I just want to be a good person. I mean, I want to be able to teach people things. And, uh, you know, I want them to, um, like, uh, I want to be able, if I can spend time with my kids and, like, spend time with who's important, you know, and be able to teach people and still make money, man, uh, that's, that's, that's absolutely what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, if you, you start factoring in things like, okay, well, uh, you remember you and I were talking about it the other day. I was like, dude, I'm not going to cut grass anymore. I'm not going to cut my own grass. Like, uh, and why? Because I'm not saying that cutting grass is beneath me or whatever, uh, or that I'm not capable of doing it. I just know there's a, somebody out there that can do it. I can pay them to do it and I can do other things that'll make me money that same amount of time that I can, you know, like, okay, how much am I, you know, you take your, you, you take how much you make a year, you divide that by um, the days and you divide that by the hours. Are you making more than $55 per hour that you were going to spend cutting that grass? Yes. Then I'm not going to cut the grass. I'm going to have somebody do it for me. Uh, you know, so that's, or like, or I got to miss a, a miss a workout because I got to get the grass cut for the 4th of July or this, that, well, dude, now you're sacrificing your health, you know, um, and things like that. Well, that's not worth it. Nothing is worth your health. Nothing is worth your family's health uh, or any of that. So, you know, um, it's important for you to know self-worth in dollar figures and also like what drives you as far as, you know, what's your reason? know what's your reason why i think Um, that's all too important too right because those those times like you just said are time wasters not in the sense that it's it's not important or anything like that but if you have a certain skill set and you're able to exercise that skill set why wouldn't you play to your strengths exactly right like so um you know that person that comes in and cuts the grass he spends about 30 minutes done and you're like dude he just made like uh, 65, 75 bucks or whatever, cutting the grass. He probably just spent another 30 minutes cutting another yard for a hundred bucks. And he just made a hundred bucks. People always look at that $100 or the, uh, you know, uh, my cousin was here a few days ago. I paid her 200 bucks just to clean my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, now the house is, a, it's a pretty big house. And I was like, dude, I'm never going to do it. Um, you know, Stephanie doesn't have time to do it sometimes. Right. Like, uh, we're just busy. Uh, um, so how are you going to manage this? And, you know, you come home and you're like, oh, man, the house is not clean. So now I got to do this or I got to do this or I got to do that. No, you know, I took the time. I was like, man, you know what? Um, for me and stuff, it's worth it. Just pay somebody to do it. Um, you know, they'll do it faster. They'll do, probably do it better, <laughs> right? They'll do it better than you because they're an expert. And now you got a win-win situation. You know, you got your time back. You got some of your time back and uh, they made money off of the deal. And, uh, you know, they're a professional. You're not. So just know your strengths, right? Like know your strengths, know your weaknesses. Um, And it doesn't always have to be like, hey, dude, like if you like to cut the grass and enjoy it, do it. That's that's your hobby. I don't I don't enjoy it. Right. So I didn't I just didn't want to do it. And I was like, uh, but it was always to save a dollar. I'm like, man, save a dollar. But what did I sacrifice? time you know it's, which is sorry say again 
Which is super important, right? Like knowing your time, like knowing what the uh, worth of your time is. Yes, 100%. Like the biggest, the biggest thing that I, I notice with people is they spend, and my coach even says it, is they'll spend their time doing the $10 task, the minimum wage task, when they could spend their time doing the high ticket, the high ticket task, whatever that might be. And I mean, you hit the nail on the head. If you're not thinking long term about this, then you're not able to really squeeze the most out of life, squeeze the most juice out of the, the fruit in order to get the, you know, the flavor essentially. Um, so it's interesting that you see that and you, you, you even notice it in the day to day, right? Like you got to be the most effective person that you can as the, the head of the business. That, but not only that, man, um, just, uh, even in with family, right? Like, uh, I could have spent the entire day, which I've done cutting grass and I didn't get to spend time with my kids or doing this or that. And I'm starting thinking, I'm like, man, that's not worth it. So, um, you know, and we're just using cutting grass as like a, like as a, as a, um, example, right. There's other things too, right. And it doesn't have to be about physical labor or anything like that. Like, uh, you know, right. account and stuff like that payroll and um all that kind of stuff so you know i could spend the whole day doing that uh or i could spend the whole day with my kids now there is no monetary value on spending time with family right it's priceless so yeah of course i would do that in a heartbeat you know so um i i believe that's you know where most of it derives from is being able to uh, obviously know your self-worth, but then also knowing like how much, how valuable time is with everybody else. That's huge right there. If y'all, if y'all miss that, there is no monetary value to spending time with family and friends. It's priceless. That is like, if we could write that down and have that on a plaque, gee, that would be, you know, in so many people's homes because it's true. And you don't really, you know, you don't really realize it until you don't have that time or you've spent less time as it goes by because it's like oh man you know um my grandma just passed she's over in france and uh you know you notice and you, it hits you like you're not going to hear that person say your name again or joke with you or whatever it might be and it's like okay well now i'm gonna learn from this and i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna spend more time with those that i love and that make me feel good you know and make sure that you're set up along the way yeah and oftentimes i feel like uh and I, you know not to go off on a tangent, but I feel like oftentimes a lot of people, um, they realize a little too late, but it's really never really too late because, you know, there's other family, other friends that you should really focus your time on as well. Yeah. So, you know, I learned that, um, you know, with my dad um, last year, you know, I, shortly after I was like, man, I, I wish I could. I, I spent a lot of time, um, like, uh, not hating him, but like having a very strong dislike for my dad um and then he passed away and i was like man i really wish i could have just um spent more time with him yeah you know, it's really important to remember yeah i get that i totally get that and then there's the the processes that you go through as 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 time goes on um so with that being said i want to have a question we uh we have the, the the list here but i see this one and it just happens to have the blue bar around it so with all your success with everything that you've you've accomplished so far and who you've developed into what do you wish you had known when you started out um that you can't do everything yourself mm. um you know especially with business um or it's in just in da daily life right like you can correlate the two um it's it's okay to ask for help yes. uh, because here's the thing you know um if I go work out, I'm not as motivated as I am working out uh, at your gym, right? Uh, if I don't, um, you know, like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing if I'm doing my taxes. So I hired a CPA, right, to do that kind of stuff. Um, and it was the same thing, man. When I first started, I just wanted to do everything because I had this control problem. Like, uh, nobody's going to do it as good as I can. But actually, in reality, man, there's people out there that can do things better than you can. Um, so, you know, you find somebody better in, 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 if it's in business, right. You find somebody that can do it better than you do your business. They just do it better than you. And then I've heard too, from different people, of course, but like, if they can do it 70% better than you, or if they can do it at least 70% of what you can, or at least 80% of what you can do, then you need to give that task to them right off the bat. Right. Because, um, you know, 
that 30%, again, like that 30% that's missing, is that worth your time? We go back to always, is it worth your time? Well, if, you know, if that 70% that's getting done is taking care of majority of the business and you can handle that 30 and it gives you time to do other things, then do it. Um, you know, or you find somebody to do the other 30% of what's going on, you know, in your business or uh, what have you, you know, and uh, man, that took me a while to learn. I remember, man, we were doing everything. I, at one point, I wanted to paint the walls and stuff of my stores and do all that stuff myself. Now I think about it, I'm like, dude, call somebody. <laughs> I'm like, really? call somebody. Call somebody, just get it done. Um, you remember, like, uh, you know, I remember, um, like, wanting to do all my uh, reports and this and that. But man, there was only so much you could do in a business. And it, as fast as we grew, I'm talking about, man, first year, you know, we had three stores um, from February to December, three stores. Then the next year, we had nine. Uh, after that, we had 21. And we had 32. Boom. Really? Uh, in a, within a four to- four year time span. Um, you know, 32 locations. And um, again, like I felt like, oh, I got to catch up, right? I got to catch up to some of these people. So in the in the midst of all that, I acquired locations that I probably should have not messed with. So closed them down, sold them off, did whatever. Uh, right now in reality, I would be at like 40 some locations. And I remember there was a brief period of time where that was happening too with your, with basically when you were working, right? You were getting rid of stores and you were consolidating, seeing which ones worked and which ones weren't working, right? Right, yeah. And uh, I guess that's another thing is uh, just because it's more doesn't mean it's better. Yeah. Uh, Right, so, you know, like, uh, I mean, at one point I would have 40 something stores right now if I kept them all, but I make more money now with the um, I remember you, you were mentioning, we, we had past conversations where you said some just weren't profitable and if they don't turn a profit within X amount of time and, it, you know, you basically play chess with your, with your business to make it lucrative. Profit. Some turned to profit and they just weren't worth the headache. Right. Like, you know, so you, you just let it go. You know, you, uh, you sell it off and you, you put your money into something else. It's all about investments. Uh, you know, I guess the, the, the word that should be emboldened in all of this is time. Yeah. You know, so with that said, like, uh, it's, it's important to know, you know, like for me, man, there was, if I knew that now, I mean, if I knew that starting out, man, things would be so much like not saying that I, I don't like where I'm at now, but man, that talk about a shortcut, (laughs) you know, uh, that's, and it takes, uh, it takes time to learn that, you know, to know that people can do things better than you, um, you know, uh, you know, paying that $50 extra to go work out with you, um, keeps people more motivated, um, you know, um, yeah. keep, like, you know, you challenge them, uh, you know, they get, uh, you know, dietary, uh, uh, influence and stuff like that. Right. And working out with other people, they just don't want to be left behind. Right. They want to, everybody else is losing weight. I want to lose weight too. Yeah. Or everybody else is successful. I want to be successful too. Um, And, uh, you know, that's kind of the things where you start to look at money a little differently, right? You start to look at it and say, man, um, you know, you don't go blow it, right? You still have to like live a pretty frugal lifestyle. But at the same time, it's like, let me invest into myself. Like, how can I invest into myself? And then how can I invest, uh, um, into my time, right? Like, like how, like how can I free up my time and how can I invest into myself? And, uh, you know, before you know it, you're like, man, uh, you don't even notice that difference, right? That, that, that money that you're spending to go to, uh, work out with you, because guess what? The people that spend $50 at another gym, they probably don't even go. So now they're wasting $50 instead of gaining from the hundred dollars that they spend or, you know, whatever they're spending every single month. And what happens all too often, too, is whenever you invest in yourself, whether it's with a gym, whether it's with a coach or reading a book or whatever, it, you, you see the, the flourishing, the results in almost every area of life, right? So since we're talking about the gym, you, you see in the gym, you feel better, you're around other people, you get to share and learn from their experiences with the questions that we ask, you get a good workout, you come home, it helps relieve some stress, you're able to spend 
time more presently with your kids, your appetite is up, so you're able to eat properly and you want to eat properly to recover. You sleep better because you uh, expended some energy and it just kind of flows, you know what I mean? So all of a sudden it's like improving myself is so much better than putting stuff on myself, you know, like buying clothes or buying jewelry. Now, don't get me wrong, like if that brings you happiness, that brings you happiness, but um, it's nothing like investing in yourself and being able to then impact others with it. Not at all. And here's the thing, like, um, you know, there's things that if you start putting things like logically, right? Okay, well, how much do you spend on medical bills, right? Not taking care of yourself. Yes. Or, yeah, like how many times do you have to pay a copay to do this or do that because, or you needed prescriptions or you needed medicine, painkillers, this and that, uh, when you could have just ate right. Right, like uh, people are like, well, eating right is expensive. Well, so is going to the doctor. <laughs> you know, um, so you know when you start looking at things like that, um, uh, you you really have to watch like what you uh, put into your body, and then at the same time, like what what you put out. Right, like uh, as far as oh, um, you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that myself, I'm gonna do all this, blah blah blah, and then before you know it, you've done canceled everything else in your life to be able to accommodate um these things because you wanted to save some money yep yep and it ends up hurting you and what i see too all too freaking often too is it hurts you more often in the end right whenever you stop the investment or or you choose not to it, it hurts you more in the end um okay so i have a couple more questions the first one this is a good one if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it metaphorically speaking, getting a message out to millions or billions, what would it say and why? Um, I know there's a few things uh, that I would say out there, but um, uh, I think the, the most important would be um, thinking outside of the box, right? Like think outside the box as if there was no box. Because there really isn't, right? Like there's no limitation to what you can do, but there's this metaphorical box that everybody always says, hey, you know what? I'm going to, you know, oh, I got to think outside this box. And they're like, oh, it's too much work, right? Whereas, man, there is no box. There is no limit to what you can do. Just do it, right? Um, so yeah. that said, it's like, man, I, you, you know, don't, don't, just don't limit yourself. Like, like uh, you know, you want to do something, learn about it. You know, don't just go into something like, Oh, I'm going to go in it tomorrow. I'm going to be a millionaire, <laughs> right? Like I'm going to take, I'm going to sell my house and go into the stock market and uh, I'm going to become a millionaire. And then no, that's not going to happen. There is just uh very, I mean, you're better off playing the lotto, right? Right. But, you know, if you start to think like there is no limitation and like what you can do, even if you're 300 pounds, you want to get a six pack, it's going to take you a while, but can it be done? Of course, but you got to want to do it. Um, and again, you know, thinking outside the box as if there is no box, you know, like I can do that. Right. You know, uh, or be, being creative, uh, you know, um, it just, it just all goes back to mindset, you know, it's just, it's just a big mindset thing. And it's just, uh, the person that's going to hold you back the most is always going to be yourself. Yep. Ooh, I like that. Think outside of the box as if there is no box. Because yeah. even even visually putting that there, right? Because if you if there is a box, right, you get out of the box. I'm a very visual person, so you're looking outside of it. There's this whole realm of possibilities. But then once you realize the box is the limitations, and there is really no limitations, then it's really just free reign, right? Because the box provides safety. Yep, that's right. Ooh, all right. So um, next one, next one. Let me see. When you feel overwhelmed or unfocused or have lost your focus temporarily, what do you do? Um, you know, you, you, for me, what I've done in the past is, uh, I, you know, I take a break, right? Like I take, like, let's say if it's a, from work or whatever or whatever, and I've lost focus on it. I, you know, I take a break, but I really take that time to um, read something um, that may you know, has already gotten me on that path, right? Like something that completely changes your mindset. Because uh, I'm into big, like self-development, uh, like books and stuff like that. You and I talk about that all the time. So, you know, I'll read a page or two or of something, um, you know, that book that you gave me, um, The Tribe of Mentors, 
right? Like I'll read some of that and instantly reset. You know, you're like, hey, get back to it, you know? Or um, just knowing things like, uh, you know, what drives you? Uh, asking yourself the questions or having a vision board, uh, you know, anytime. And I, I tell this to a, a lot of people, have a vision board, right? And uh, if you're around it, uh, if that doesn't motivate you, then it's not important enough. Because if you get, you fall off track and you look to your right and you see this, oh man, I want to get that Ferrari, <laughs> right? Like that's, that's what I want, you know? So, and uh, you're going to be motivated for it. For me, my vision is always like, uh, I look at my, my phone and I'm like, man, it's my kids, right? It's a picture of my kids. I'm like, man, this is what I do it for. Yeah. And then y'all can't, if you're not watching the video behind them, there's a picture of, um, Jordan Belford, Leo is Jordan mm -hmm. Belford uh, yeah. from Wolf of Wall Street, right? So having things that motivate you around you, it's so important. The environment is so, 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 so freaking important. I don't want people to get the misconception of like, hey, money is what like motivates me, right? Like, uh, of course, it, there's a motivation behind it. And if anybody told me that there's uh, in what like they do, that there's no motivation, like money's not the motivation, then... Yeah. It's a very slim, I mean, there's a very good chance that they're not telling the truth right. uh, because we're all working for that, right? But the what for me is important is what money can do for you. Yes. And, you know, again, going back to time, going be, being able to spend time with your family, um, you know, being able to pay for their education years in advance, you know, things like that. That's what's really important to me. And, and that's the difference maker, right, is looking and using at mon looking at and using money as a tool rather than an end result, right? Because money as an end result really, I mean, it can do things for you, right? It can, it can bring out a sense of security, but that's also an internal thing. Um, but using it as a tool makes all the difference in the world there. Um, right. There's a lot of successful people. Um, they say, hey, you everything went south, you, you went bankrupt, you got $100 in your pocket, what do you do with it? 100% of the time, these guys always say, I'm going to go invest into myself. Buy a book, you know, go read a book. And I hated books. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I hated reading books. Uh, but now, like very recently, uh, January, I mean, man, this year has been crazy. I started reading books. There's Coronavirus, Kobe Bryant, uh, you know, it's kind of been pretty crazy, but, you know, like this was also the year, you know, I started taking things like, uh, you know, reading books, doing stocks, like reading articles, like things that I would never do, listening to podcasts and, you know, actually being on a podcast now. I know, man, it's been a, a hell of a, a growth. Um, to those listening, I apologize. My little fire alarm thing needs a battery. So if you hear a little beep, that's what it is. Um, but no, that's all too true. So that's, that was kind of leading into the next thing I was going to ask was um, what advice would you give to like a smart driven college student or somebody who's in their late teens, early twenties, they're about to go in the, in the real world. What advice would you give them and what advice should they ignore? Um, you don't have to um, follow the path that everybody says that you need to right? or other people have paid for you. Um, you can take your own path. Um, and, uh, you know, you go to school, I went to school for engineering. I didn't become an engineer. I went there to think differently because engineers think differently, right? Like that's how it's always been taught to me, or that's how I always looked at it. It's like, if you ever took a uh, AutoCAD, you start to look at, it's, a, it's, it's these lines and things, right? Like you're looking at them and you're like, uh, in front of you, it looks like it's a square. And then, um, you take a different perspective of it and it's, it's actually, um, a triangle, Right. And that's what I was like, man, that's weird. But now that's all about perception and like how you look, perceive things. Um, so for them, I would just say, hey, you know, um, uh, you don't have to do things the exact same way that everybody else did it for you before you, you know, mm -hmm. if you went to school uh, for philosophy, you know, you don't have to become a philosopher. You like, it, you know, like that's just not, you don't have to do that. Uh, and you don't need education. Uh, you don't need uh college to be successful you know uh, there's plenty of people out there that are successful because they're just good at it like and it's self-education and uh you know just because college is ended you don't stop learning you you've got to invest into yourself more after college than i think you um do while you're in college yeah i agree with that especially to to have success and to develop 
into the, the, the potential that we all have, like you got to keep educating yourself. You got to keep leveling up. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not self-educating, um, man, you're, you're just, you're not really setting yourself up. Right. Right. Like, uh, you know, and it's always got to be learning. And if it, if learning feels like a chore, man, um, there's not very much, you know, that can be said about that. You know, for me, I just love to learn things, you know, uh, you know, if, even if it's like just some stupid fact, I, I would love to learn that, you, you know, some, some crazy stuff like, uh, this year, you know, I learned real estate, you know, and it's, it's like completely changed my world. And if I can, um, I spent from January to now learning it. Am I expert at it? No, but I took the time, um, to educate myself on it, read books, read, uh, listen to podcasts, um, you know, join Facebook groups, um, you know, social media, I feel like is just not used right. Most of the times a lot of people look at it. They're like, Oh dude, uh, let me watch this cooking video. Now, if you're somebody that cooks a lot, right. And is it educational for you? Perfect. But dude, if you don't cook, then why are you watching it? <laughs> right. Like, uh, I'm to entertain. Yeah. So for me, you know, uh, Facebook, uh, is great because I get to, what be a part of these groups that I see other people having massive success um, and being able to stay in touch with family, of course. Um, But, you know, just surrounding yourself with things that are um, pretty similar to like the vision that you have. Yeah. Like uh, if somebody's, uh, you know, take on a mentor, Uh, I would always say take on a mentor. Uh, It's like the same as paying for a franchise you're taking the shortcuts of uh, not having to figure it out yourself. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. That's one of the, the, every coach that I've had, not only because you, they want the, the sale, but every coach that I've had has said the same exact thing, pay for the knowledge, pay for the experience in order to basically just skip it yourself, you know, like, or not experience it quite, to the level that you might there's and there's a I'm, I'm sure there's a when you first started there was probably like hey man this is expensive why am i but then after you figured it out like after everything was done you were like man you know what that was not that expensive for the mistakes that i could have made that i didn't have to um you know like uh I remember I, I took a, a leadership I, and I, this is the thing I do. I, I always go to like leadership classes and to always be a more effective leader. Um, again, self-development, reading books and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, you know, there's things that I've learned uh, from uh, reading or going to these classes, like of hire, how to hire people effectively. And uh, I'm like, man, if I could have kept, if I would have kept going this, the way I was with hiring people, it would have cost me a fortune. So in the end of it all, I ended up saving money rather than losing money um, because I spent a little bit of time. Like I said, it takes time. It takes money to make money, uh, but you don't always see that. And uh, I think it's important for people to start thinking of the uh, what's going to be in the future rather than what's going on right now. Yeah, very true. And there's there's a fine balance between it all, too. You know, um, that's for sure. So. All right. Before we go, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't or anything that you want to share or anything like that? Uh, no, to be honest, uh, I probably said more than I, uh, you know, more than you asked. I probably did most, most of the talking. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I'll, I'll just say this, like, uh, and going back to like the, uh, you know, just thinking outside the box, just, uh, um, you know, people uh, too often just think about the limitations they 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 think about the limitations um rather than just uh just going for it right and not just like risk it for the biscuit kind of deal like uh you you know go in there educated and um you know uh teaching yourself and all those sorts of things but it's okay to uh move forward right like where you are now isn't where you always have to be like just because that's what you know that's where how your family was raised or that's how that's where you came from doesn't mean that's what what's what you have to do and that's the same i would say to that that college kid uh just because you know 
your parents were doctors doesn't mean you have to be a doctor. You know, if it's not, if it's not for you, it's not for you. I love that. I love that. That's one thing. So the, the NLP is one thing that I'm learning now. And it's, it's kind of like what they teach at some leadership conferences and basically how you speak, what you say and how your body language and what that gives off. And one thing they talked about was being not the effect, right. And receiving the effect, but being the cause. So then rather than working from, because this was my past, this is what I'm capable of in the future. You're working from, no, I can work and be the possibility and I can be the cause and I can change my world just from, just from that. Um, so I love that, man. Um, anything else? There's one thing, man. Um, this is really important because uh, I, you know, one thing you and I talk about, but kind of, kind of over, like just skipped it, uh, is just effective goal setting, right? Um, setting goals that um, aren't very unrealistic, right? Like uh, before you say, I'm going to become a billionaire, try to become a millionaire, right? Like that's, don't set that billionaire goal. Um, and there's a story uh, and everybody knows Warren Buffett, right? Like everybody knows who Warren Buffett is. So Warren Buffett is uh, um, talking to his driver and his driver has been driving for him for years. Right. And uh, he says, man, what are you still doing here? Uh, you should be a millionaire by now from all the things that you've overheard. Right. And uh, he says, well, I just never, won't, never, you know, took the chance or never did it. Right. And uh, he's Warren Buffett said, well, what's your top, what's your 20 goals? Give me 20 goals. And uh, from there, there, he said, well, what's your top five? Um, and uh, he says, okay, these, and he circles the top five. And um, he says, well, you know, what are these goals? Like, are all of these goals important? And uh, the guy says, yeah. And then Warren Buffett responds back and says, no, they're not. Only those top five. Uh, those top five goals are the most important because you said those were the most important. Um, and if you try to focus on all 20 of these goals, you're not going to be able to do those top five that are the most important to you. So effective goal setting, I think, is the one thing that uh, a lot of people uh, don't do very well. But if you do it um, as you should, um, you'll see the results. I love that. I love that. And then we talked about um, in the other conversations about having you on again. So uh, that's something that we can dive into more right now that we have a good idea of who G is. Now we can start diving into G's mind and then seeing the way that you think and how you unlock excellence in your everyday life, in your business, with your goal setting. Because, I mean, even from the beginning when you talked about doing mirror work and having those conversations with yourself in sales, those are the little things that build and build and build and then now allow you to sell X amount without any hesitation. Whereas somebody who, like you said, sometimes you can't even give something away for free because you don't do that work um, to build the trust and the likability with the customer and the prospect or whoever it is, honestly. Right. Sweet deal, dude. Um, with that being said, thank you all so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Y'all, if you want to reach out and contact G or myself, I'll have the information in the comments and in the description section. So with that being said, I hope you have a great day. I love you. G, um, anything that you want to say to send off? Uh, no, man. I just uh, appreciate you having me here. Appreciate, you ha have it, uh, appreciate having you too. G, you're unstoppable. Everybody listening, y'all are unstoppable. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace.